Hey everyone, Mayhem Prone here from the Mayhem Prone Show, where today, oh my gosh, we hit a hundred subscribers. This is freaking amazing. I can't believe we actually got a hundred subscribers. It's just completely mind blowing. And as I promised, in celebration of 100 subs, we're going to be doing a Q&A. So let's get right into it. So to start this thing off, Sharingan asked, what's your favorite childhood movie or shows you grew up with? Now, I'm not sure if any of you are going to remember the show, but does anybody remember Fetch with Rough Rough Men? That show was literally my childhood. I love that show. That was so fun. So what are my thoughts on the upcoming 2017 MLP movie? Well, I know nothing about it because I don't like spoilers, but I am extremely excited for it. And who's my favorite and least favorite pony? Well, my favorite would probably be Derby Hooves, and my least favorite would be, without a doubt, Snips and Snails. And have I ever collected any pony merts? Well, no, I don't have any, but that's mostly because I've been sending my money to increase my amiibo collection. I have quite a few amiibos at this point. So thanks for the question. Why is it that I didn't think I could hit 100 subs? Well, to put it simply, it's because my videos used to be of really poor quality. For those of you who don't know, I've posted videos on a regular basis for almost a year and a half, and by the end of year one, I'd gotten barely 25 subscribers. That's because my videos weren't really all that good. So I expected at most by the end of year two, to get 50 subscribers, but then I got good at editing and I created the Mayhem Prone Show and I got a lot of support. So if I hadn't have made the Mayhem Prone Show, I'd probably still be at like 30 subscribers. So it's just because I got good at editing and I used to be really bad, so I never thought I'd make it this far. But I have to thank you guys for supporting me so much. Is there anything special I'm hoping from MLP in the close future? Well, to put it simply, I want more episodes about Thorax. He was so cool. Now, so far, what's my least favorite episode of the show? Well, that honor has to go to Dragon Quest because of its horribly twisted moral. One of the big points of the show is to show that you should not judge someone because of their race. Like, for example, with Thorax, he was feared because he was a changeling, even though it turned out that he was a pretty nice guy. But you know what happens in Dragon Quest? The ponies say, Spike, you should live with us ponies because all dragons are jerks. That's freaking going against the entire moral of the show! How can you just group all the dragons into one group and just say they're all horrible so you should live with the ponies? That is exactly the opposite of what the show is trying to teach. How could they screw up a moral that bad? I'm sorry, that episode, the moral just really angers me. If I did something different, I would have made it that some dragons were nice. Then you could say, Spike, come live with the ponies because they're your true family. But the way the episode is, it's completely breaking the moral by being racist against all dragons, which completely destroys the purpose of the entire show. It's just so annoying. What's my opinion on the Equestria Girls movies overall? Well, I liked them a lot. The first one was only okay, the second one was amazing, and the third one was pretty good. And I'm pretty pumped for the fourth one, so I like the series overall. What's my opinion on the upcoming Pokemon games? I am super excited! I can't wait to get them! I'm probably gonna get it for Christmas, I'm gonna get Pokemon Moon, and I'm gonna play the heck out of it. To tide me over, I'm going back and playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeons Explorers of Time, which is my second favorite video game of all time. But I am so pumped. I can't wait for those games to come out. And finally, from Jolly Sunshine, is there anything interesting I'm hoping will happen in general? Over that, I'm really hoping I can get my hands on one of those NES Classic Editions when they come out later this year. I am really excited for that. It's so cool. A new NES that you could just buy and plug into your TV and use. I really like the idea, and I really want to get one. Movix Movix 001 asks, what's my opinion on the star swirl is discord theory? Now, this is a very special theory in my opinion, because most theories, the evidence either points for or against it, so you can easily take a side. This is one of the very rare instances that a theory has almost equal amounts of evidence for and against it. So after thinking about it for two weeks, I'm going to have to stay neutral on this, because I can't really say whether I believe it or I disbelieve it, because the evidence is so split. Oh, Movix, Movix, why did you have to choose the one theory in the fandom where I'm completely neutral? Any other theory I would have had an opinion on, but this one is the one theory where I'm completely neutral. 
Ouija Slayer asked some amazing questions. Who's my favorite Brony analysis? Well, that honor has to go to Lightning Bliss. Do I like clouds? Yes, I absolutely love clouds. And do I like the Fallout series? Well, this is a complicated one because ever since I was a little kid, I've been raised on Nintendo consoles. My first console was a GameCube, my second was a DS, the third one was a Wii, the fourth one was a 3DS, and my fifth one's a Wii U. So I've always been a Nintendo kind of guy. And my little brother has Xboxes, but I've never been able to get really into a non-Nintendo series, so I actually haven't played a Fallout game. But I have made it my goal this year to get Fallout 4 and play through it, because being a Nintendo fanboy my entire life, I really want to get into a non-Nintendo series like Fallout or Metal Gear Solid, so that's my goal for this year. What's my favorite historical time period? When it comes to me, I tend to get more interested the farther back in time you go, so my favorite time period would probably be like pre-Cambrian times. How good am I at art? Well, to put it plainly, I am terrible at art. Before I became mayhem prone, my channel was called Axel Lazuli Entertainment, and I tried to draw my own OC, and it was supposed to be like a cartoon character. This is what it turned out to be. This took me a week of trying my hardest to create. So as you can see, I am a terrible artist. I've tried many a time, and I can't. If I could art, I would definitely art, but I can't make art to save my life. It's very sad. Do I like Scootaloo? Well, of course, who wouldn't like Scootaloo? She's an excellent character. And what do I think of the new villain the new Equestria Girls movies? No spoilers! No spoilers! No spoilers! I have no idea! No spoilers! No spoilers! No spoilers! Wade Wilson asks, What's my blood type? I actually don't know that. What is my weapon of choice? Well, being an alchemist, I would go with the potion. But if that answer was excluded, I would dual wield whips, kind of like Indiana Jones. Wapow! Wapow! What do I find disturbing in MLP? This face. What's my favorite subliminal message? This. If one of the main six turned out to be evil all along and was just faking to be their friend, how would you react? No, Rary, how could you? How could you betray them? They were your friends. No, why, Rarity, why? Why do you think Luna was missing at the wedding? Oh my gosh, Luna has four letters in it. There are four alicorn princesses. Four times four is 16. I've made two episodes about Luna, 16 divided by 2 is 8, and in the series there's been 5 alicorns if you include Trixie and not Big Mac because it was just a dream, and 8 minus 5 is 3. There are 3 sides on a triangle. Lonely Fanboy asks, what's my thoughts on the Ed and Nettie episode, Exaggerate? Well, honestly, as a kid, I rarely watched Ed and Nettie. I found it boring as a child, so I rarely ever watched it, so I don't really know the episode. What was the first video game I ever played? Well, I can vividly remember my first time ever playing LEGO Star Wars 1 for the GameCube. It was so fun, and I love it. The LEGO Star Wars games are so fun. And yeah, that was my first ever video game. What's my favorite song from the Equestria Girls movies? Well, it has to be... Oh, 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 unleash the magic, unleash the magic. I'm sorry you guys had to hear that, I couldn't help myself. Do I think that My Little Pony Generation 4 will end when the movie comes out? And to that, I'm not sure. It seems like season 6 isn't getting nearly as much publicity as the last 5 seasons, so the show may be going downhill, it seems like viewership is down. But will the show end exactly when the movie comes out? I doubt it, it may happen the same year, but right when the movie comes out, I don't think that would be the cause for the series to end. And once again, my favorite character in MLP is Derpy Hoos, and I just Checked out your rants, they're very good, you have many good points, though I do think a better editing software would severely improve your videos, but for what it was done with, I think you did a very good job. Nightstar asks, what's my real name? Well duh, it's mayhem prone, it says in the title of the show, duh, wink. What are my favorite and least favorite episodes in the show? Well, I've already said my least favorite is Dragon Quest, but when it comes to my favorite, that's a much more complicated subject, because there's so many episodes I love, and I'm really not sure what my favorite is. I'm going to have to watch through the series again to come up with a definitive answer, but since you asked the question, I'm just going to say Bats, because in my opinion, that's the most memorable episode in the show. 
but I'll have to put in some deep thought to think what my true favorite is, but I'll probably make a top 10 best episodes of MLP someday in the future. How do I feel about sipping? Well, that's a complicated subject, but my basic opinion on it is that sipping is perfectly fine as long as you know that it is imaginary and most likely not canon to the show. If you get angry at someone because they don't like your sip, you know that the sip's gone too far. For example, I've pointed out several times in my videos that I sip my character of Derpy Hooves, and that's perfectly okay, except it almost stopped me from making last week's episode. Why is this? Well, in last week's episode, I talk about if Derpy Hooves had a husband, and at first that kind of annoyed me because I sipped my character of her, and I realized the sip was blinding me and I couldn't allow that to happen, so I stopped it and I made the episode. Hashtag Mayhem Hooves. And as I said earlier, I think the best brony analyzer is Lightning Bliss. And how far will I go in my channel? Well, I'm gonna go as far as physically possible. I don't want to stop anytime soon. Making weekly posts is a lot more difficult now that school's back in session, but I'm gonna try to post as often as possible, and I can almost guarantee I'll have a video out every two weeks at minimum. And who do I think would win the fight, an alicorn or a dragon? Well, to me, there's no question it would definitely be the Alicorn. Why? Because in Dragon Sai, Fluttersai defeated a dragon single-handedly, and she's just a Pegasus, she's not even an Alicorn, so an Alicorn could easily take a dragon down. If I have Pokemon Go, which team am I in? Well, that's simple. Team Valor! Who is my favorite character from The Walking Dead? Well, I'm gonna be honest, I've never seen The Walking Dead. What kind of name do I think they're gonna give the Changeling? Well, I think I'm gonna put my money on Thorax, but that's just because the episode's already aired. Do I think that Sunburst somehow traveled to the past and became Stars World the Bearded? Now, this actually makes a lot of sense. The physical similarities are very noticeable, but I don't really think this is possible considering the fact that Sunburst isn't very good at magic despite having a huge knowledge of it, so I think that kind of disqualifies him. Which do I think is better, Digimon or Pokemon? Now, once again, I actually haven't watched Digimon before or played any of the games. Wow, I just realized that there's a lot of shows that are really good that I'm missing out on. So I'm just gonna have to go with Pokemon for right now. And what kind of character do I want in the show? Now, what I would really like to see in the show is the Pinkie Pie clones come back. Like maybe one Pinkie Pie clone, maybe this one that we saw in Shadow Row Review, but because of their life outside of Ponyville, the personality has changed. Maybe the Pinkie Pie clone is like a super smart intellect working at a university. Something like that, seeing Pinkie Pie go down a completely different path personality-wise. Bin Bin TSM asked me, did I expect everyone to give me at least six questions? And no, I did not expect that, but it's awesome. So many cool questions to answer. And our final comment of the day comes from DJ Silverwing, who asks, Who's my favorite analyzer from the Rift Cafe and how would I rate them? And I've already established that this is Lightning Bliss, but for rating, I would definitely have to give her a 10 out of 10, because not only is she a good voice actor for her character, she's also an amazing editor. Like, most amazing stuff you see from that community was edited by Lightning Bliss. She's excellent. Do I think that Toon Critic will win against cartoons in hashtag the end? Well, here's a story. Literally right after I answered Nightstar's question about shipping, I decided to take a 15 minute break so I could cool down. So I booted up YouTube. And literally as I booted up YouTube, he released the end. And I was so excited, all my money was on Toon Critic winning. And that twist ending though, that is dramatic. I wonder if the conclusion will be released by the time this video is out. But if not, oh my gosh, that twist ending surprised me. I kind of saw it coming from the language, but really seeing it happen was real dramatic. Do I think I can collab with someone? And if so, who would it be? Well, you're in luck. As I said, right after I answered the question about sipping, I took a break. Well, right before I answered the question about sipping, I spent two hours collabing with two other gaming channels for some cool gaming videos. I collaborated with Bin Bin TSM, who you'd recognize as the comment I just answered, and another channel called Marley the Killer Bunny. So those cool videos should be coming out any day now. But now that we're on the topic, I have an exciting announcement. I'm starting a second channel. It'll be linked in the description below. It's called More Mayhem. This channel's grown to be about analysis videos and top tens and stuff like that. So I decided I might still want to do like gaming content and vlogs every now and then. So I decided to start an entire second channel for those to live on called More Mayhem. 
I'm real excited. I don't expect to post on it like a super ton amount of time, but it'll be pretty cool. So feel free to subscribe to more mayhem. Do I think I can make more theories on TF2 analysis anarchy? Well, the answer is yes, but it's a bit more complicated than that. I have to explain that when it comes to making an episode of the Mayhem Prone Show, there's one step that's a lot harder than the others, and that is coming up with the concept for the episode. Coming up with a theory every week is very difficult, and it's by far the most difficult part of the process. And since TF2 is only about 25 episodes long, it makes it especially difficult to come up with theories for it. But the Finn is Evil theory is one of my best theories I've ever made, and it was super fun to make, so I hope I can make something like it soon in the future. But I have to, of course, come up with the idea, and that's a lot easier said than done. So I'm watching each episode as closely as I can. I'm trying to come up with another theory, but until then, I'm going to keep working on it. And for the final question of the day, the one that I specifically left for last because it has the longest explanation, what is the origin of my OC? So gather around, fillies and gentle cults, for the story of Mayhem Prone. I started out as just a little colt in school who had no idea where I belonged, until one fateful day. Our school decided to bring in a magician to perform a show for us, and it completely blew my mind. The magician's magic was so amazing, that day I declared that I would someday be a magician. But being a pegasus, as you can expect, my classmates made fun of me. But it didn't discourage me very much, I spent the next few weeks traveling around Ponyville asking everyone I could find how to become a magician, but they all said it was impossible. So one day I was on the side of a mountain, pretending to be a powerful magician fighting evil, when suddenly, BOOM! A giant multicolored explosion shook me as it exploded right over my head with a blue pegasus flying out of it. As you may expect, I later learned that this was Rainbow Dash's first sonic rain boom, but at the time, it completely blew my mind. From that day, I was 100% convinced that any Pegasus could learn to do magic. And with that being said, I spent the next several months looking through the Golden Oak Library, trying desperately to find a book that would teach me how to do magic. So I looked and I looked and I looked, and eventually I came upon a very obscure small bookshelf hidden underneath a set of stairs. Now, since it was so hidden, most of these books looked like they hadn't been touched in years. So I looked through them and I didn't have any luck. But I decided to stick my hoof way back behind the books to see if any were hidden back there. And surprisingly, I actually found a book that was completely hidden from sight by the others. It was an old dusty textbook called A Basic Guide to Alchemy. I instantly took it home and started studying. Now from what I'd heard, alchemy was a somewhat taboo art in Equestria, so I kept it secret. But I studied and I studied and I studied, and I experimented with little bits of items that I was able to get from other ponies in Ponyville. They all thought I was just using it for games and stuff, but I was testing out many different varieties of basic potions. One day, I was working on one of the most advanced potions in the book, a sparkler potion. This is kind of like, you know, on New Year's Eve, those sparklers that suit out sparkles when you light them up? It was kind of like that. It shot sparkles everywhere. And the recipe required a pinch of gunpowder. Now, as you could probably tell, when I was applying the pinch of gunpowder in, I accidentally slipped and dropped the entire container in. And long story short, this blew a hole in the side of our house. Now this is pretty bad, but some good came out of it. I gained my cutie mark, which is a flask with the symbol of mayhem inside of it, representing the exploding potion. So now my love of alchemy was public, but since I had my cutie mark in it, there's not anything anyone could really do. But that textbook could only really teach me so much. So one day I snuck into the Everfree Forest to get a sample of what now today is my favorite ingredient of all time. Extract of Poison Joke, and as you can expect, being a little cold in the Everfree Forest, I got into trouble pretty quickly, and I probably would have been a goner if it hadn't have been for Zikora, who came in and saved me. At first he was confused at why I was out there, but then she saw my cutie mark, and then she decided to do something really nice. She took me underneath her metaphorical wing and decided to teach me in the ways of ancient alchemy. And since at the time Zakora was an outcast, these lessons were kept top secret. But after several years of learning, I became Ponyville's local alchemist. But even today, I still strive for many goals. The main one is discovering the recipe of an ancient potion called the Alicorn Brew. The recipe to this magical concoction is said to have been lost over a thousand years ago. 
but it is said that whoever consumed it would permanently become an alicorn with no negative side effects. And for many years, I've strived to recreate it. But that still leaves one open question. Why is it that I have a dragon wing? Well, this was actually answered in my 50 subscriber special. In that video, I decided to, on camera, try an experimental version of the alicorn brew that I had created in my alchemical lab. And, as you notice, it did not turn me into an alicorn, but it did give me this dragon wing, which is pretty cool, because I think Spike was getting annoyed of me always having to borrow his scales. So now, if I ever need dragon scales for a potion, I can just get them from my own wing. But I'm not giving up. I'm currently developing another experimental version of the alicorn brew, which will hopefully be ready by the time I hit my next subscriber special. And that is the story of Mayhem Prone. Well that's it for the Q&A, but once again I have to thank all of you for getting us to 100 subscribers. It's so amazing and I can never thank you guys enough. Hopefully I'll be able to make you guys many more amazing videos in the future. And until next time, I'm Mayhem Prone from the Mayhem Prone Show, and goodbye! Hey, type hashtag hot dogs in the comment section below if you've noticed that I've started doing scenes after the video ends, like this one.